Do you guys want a tactic that scores four or more goals a game? If you do, then do stick around. So guys, it is Josh from FM Scout today. I am going to be bringing you a video on another one of Maps tactic releases. Shout out to him. Full credit does go to him. But this tactic, it's a 4 3, 3 is absolutely incredible. Very high scoring, good at the back. And across three of the five saves, we actually scored four and above goals per average in the season. So trust me, this tactic is a good one and be sure to test it out. You can find this tactic in the description below. So let's kick things off with Crawley, obviously a team which are definitely not one of the strongest in this division. And we've come out and absolutely torn it apart. We've dominated the division 136 points compared to second place as Wimbledon with 86. We managed to score 206 goals in this division and only concede 34, which is absolutely outrageous stats. Not the best run in the Cups, to be honest, but to be honest, winning the division alone is a massive accomplishment with this side. And what makes it even better is the fact we go into the data hub, we're going to start off with the big one. Team attacking, we're looking at 4.48 goals per game in this division, which, considering we're not one of the strongest teams in it, is a very good stat line. I think that's a good stat line regardless of what team you're playing as. Scoring above four goals on average a game just shows how good this tactic is when it comes to getting goals and putting the ball in the back of the net. Now, in terms of defending, now this tactic is definitely more, in my opinion, designed for the offense more than the defense, but we still managed to concede less than a goal a game. So a very dominant defensive display as well. But obviously the main focus being this stat line here. I mean, 4.48 is absolutely incredible. Nap never disappoints with his tactics. He really doesn't. Now, let's hop over to another weak side, and that is going to be Dundee United, where we actually managed to do the unthinkable and finish above Celtic, Rangers, and Aberdeen. So, done very well there. And to be honest, again, we're sort of the under underdog sorry, in the league, and this tactic just shows it can do it as well. 136 goals scored, so a few less than the previous save, and the fourth best at conceding, conceding 52 this time. Obviously, we also were able to win the Scottish Cup against Celtic, and also the Premier Sports Cup versus Celtic. So we've done the treble over Celtic, just alone. Unfortunately, we also done very well in the Conference League, on um, the Europa Conference League, sorry, but we just couldn't go, go over the line. Florentina, obviously, a very, very good side, and unfortunately, we just didn't have enough gas in the tank to sort of go over and make it what would be a quadruple winning season. In terms of the data hub, we're going to go into defending 1.37. So as, as expected, as we saw from the stat line there, it is going to be slightly higher. And it was over a goal a game. I'm not too keen when that happens, but we'll see what we've been scoring and see if it's comfortable. And it is 3.58. So again, a little bit under four. So it is actually going to be four out of the five tactic tests we've done did score four or more. Um, I did think it was three, but it was actually four, considering that um it was Crawley that did manage that as well. So 3.58 scored per game, which is really good compared to the 1.37. So although we were a little bit weaker at the back, which isn't really an issue with this system, because it's not really designed to be a proper defensive masterclass tactic. If you guys do want something like that, then do check out the underdog video that was uploaded a few days ago, because that one is really good at that side of the game. But let's hop over to the next test, which is going to be with a slightly sort of medium, medi not mediocre, a little bit better of a side, but no one, you know, with some real, real world-class players. And that is going to be sporting. Now, obviously they have got some very good players, but we're going to save the elite sides, you know, the cities, etc., till the end, because I know you guys seem to prefer to see the smaller sides first, because a lot of you in the previous video did comment saying, oh, it's tested with PSG only, when reality, there was five teams tested with. So I figured if I start off with the weaker teams, then no one's going to have a panic and think, oh, they're just testing with Man City, etc. So sporting anyway, we managed to win the division very comfortably in terms of goals scored 144 compared to 24 conceded. We also won the Portuguese Cup and the Portuguese League Cup against Benfica. It's going to be Paulinho with 69 goals and Rashina coming in with 46 assists. So a very, very good season out of those two players, out of everyone, to be honest. I mean, this division, I want them to test in this. I really do because, you know, I usually go Premier League, German League, Spanish League. I thought, do you know what? Let's throw in the Portuguese League because it is quite competitive. You've got Porto, you've got Benfica, Braga, who are predicted to finish fourth, actually did finish fourth. And I thought it could be a bit of a race and we've won the race, we're champions and that's all that matters. But let's go into the data hub then. Team defending. 
0.71. So we're back to looking very solid at the back, um, especially in this division. Happy with that. 0.71 and 4.24 scored. That is exactly what I want to be seeing. When you're conceding less than a goal a game and you're scoring four or more, you're not going to lose too many games. And that is exactly what happened. If we look at this, um, if I go to the league table, we actually only lost three in this division. Um, we drew one, which was 2-2 against um, Chavez. The losses were, one of them was very close, or two of them were very close. It was by goal, and there was one blowout against Benfica. Obviously, we did manage to win 30, so majority of the results did go in our favour there. Now, a couple of giants, just to show you what happens when you do use this tactic with the big boys. And this is exactly what happens. It's utter domination. We were able to win the Super Cup, the Spanish Division, the Spanish Cup, and the Spanish Super Cup. We won the division, though, so comfortably. We've got Kareem Benzema coming in with 85 goals across absolutely everything, obviously, that is. And it's going to be Eden Hazard actually contributing, which is really good to see, with 35 assists. Um, but this is where it gets really impressive. 184 goals scored, obviously, in the division. Um, you're also going to be looking at only 19 conceded. Obviously, we have got a real world-class team now, so you are going to be expecting this, to be fair. But to be honest, overall, I would say that this tactic has worked very well across all sorts of stages. Lower league sides, medium sort of size teams in terms of quality. And we're now going to be reviewing two teams. We're now doing this one. And the other team is going to be Manchester City. So obviously we did actually win the Champions League too. A um, little spoiler there. But we're going to the data hub. Team attacking is going to be 4.84. So we're still sticking above that four goal margin. This is actually getting on for five now, guys. Now this is incredible stuff from that once again i can't give him enough credit sensational tactic maker again full credit goes to him but what a tactic this is so fun to use and the goals are just bang 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 constant goals and that's the one thing which i love to do on this fm i don't usually like to play too negative um too passive i like to fly at teams like to score goals and this does it so well so 4.84 and 0 0.5 conceded so really the perfect tactic in in this sense under a goal a game quite comfortably it's not even close and getting on for five goals scored per game and the last test which is going to be what we're going to get into now is going to be with manchester city and this is going to be the reality so we managed to win the premier league absolutely dominated the premier league we won the FA Cup, we won the Community Shield and the Champions League. So a quadruple winning season over in England. The only disappointment is going to be the Carabao Cup, which I don't know what happened, but Southampton had our number and won. But apart from that, it is a completely perfect season. 156 goals scored, 27 conceded. Erling Haaland, obviously the star man, 87 goals. Bernardo Silva with 32 assists as well. And the data hub is going to be very pretty to look at, I imagine. 4.11 per game in the toughest division in the world. Granted, we are the best team. But trust me, even if you're playing as one of the other top six, you know, like an Arsenal, a United, a Liverpool, you could easily match this four goal, 3.5 roughly. And... I genuinely think this tactic can be used with any sort of team you have. So I've been seeing a lot of comments about oh, with this tactic, with this tactic, sorry, work with this team, with this team. This video in particular, I really do think this tactic is designed for a bit of everything. I think you could really rock up and, and pretty much play with anyone. Um, I will, as I always like to do, go over how possibly you could go a little bit more defensive if you need to when we break down the tactic. But for me... This is a really do-it-all tactic. So 4.11 goals per game and conceded 0.71. So still under the goal mark, which is exactly what I want to be seeing and getting on for, well, just over four goals a game. So that's that side of the video done, guys. That is going to be the sort of, you know, actual analytical side. How did the tactic do the testing phase? I'm going to pick out a game now and we're going to watch it. So I've picked out this game. It is going to be a 4-0 win against Atletico Madrid. And we're just going to be watching the goals just so you can see roughly and what you can expect in terms of how the goals are going to be sort of created and how the ball does go in the back of the net. Um, but let's watch this anyway. So it's going to be Alaba pushing up from the back into Tushinemi, touches the ball down, a wonder ball through. Savage misses it into Vincius and he tucks it in the near post. Keeper possibly could have done a little bit better, but we've we got to take it and run with it. And this game was quite unique in the fact it went from scoring so early on right to the end where Atletico Madrid just completely collapsed and we actually conceded, or we actually scored, sorry, not conceded, three goals from this moment on till the end of the game. So they absolutely folded as a team. 
it's going to be Mendy here taking quite an aggressive touch into the opposition half. Driving ball all the way through into Benzema. Takes it round the keeper. A little bit of cheek from him. Obviously, he had one of the best seasons I think I've ever seen him have. Um, great play from Mendy. Beautiful bit of skill from Benzema. And that made it 2-0. But we didn't stop there. As you can see, Tony Cruz with a ball into the box into Rudiger, who loops over the keeper into the top left-hand corner. And what a goal that is. Again, still got time for another goal, don't you worry. Mendy with the left-hand side again, such an influential player. Wonderful ball over the top into Rodrigo. He could have squared it to Benzema to get another goal, but he felt a bit selfish and he tucked it in the bottom left corner. And do you know what? It's hard to explain exactly how this tactic plays because you create chances from every single different angle sometimes it's your fullback playing the ball over sometimes it's the winger there's a nice mixture and that's what i really like about this tactic is the fact that you you're not reliant on one sort of you know plan you're not reliant on going centrally you're not reliant on going on the wing it creates from every angle. It really does. But as you can see here, Madrid, for some reason, rolled them out with a very negative system. Um, no wonder why they didn't do too well. And it's a game which we absolutely dominated them. So it's a deserved result. And now we're going to get into your favorite part of the video, as always, which is going to be the tactic breakdown. So guys, this is going to be the FM23 goodbye nap. I believe that is how you're going to say it. I'm not going to say all the numbers, but that is the tactic. You can find it in the description. Again, Full credit, full credit, sorry, to you, Nap. But let's break down this tactic because it really is a work of art. We're going to start off with a mentality that is set to attacking in possession, fairly wide, shorter passing directness, slightly higher, work ball into the box with low crosses. Now, again, I always like to put my own little twist on this. If you guys do need a goal desperately, I would recommend, obviously, you could play about the creative freedom, the dribbling, possibly look to turn this off as well, just so you do get shots at the goal, not create the perfect chance. But I would roll into every game starting as this and then just adjust as you go on. Obviously, you can't expect to download one tactic and expect it to work throughout the whole season. You have to have your own tweaks on it, etc., etc. No save is the same. In transition, counter press, counter, distribute to the fullbacks and throw it long. Out of possession, you want a standard defensive line, high press line of engagement, prevent short goalkeeper distribution and much more often on the trigger press. Now, going over to the player roles. Now, let's have a little talk about these. So, we're going to start off with the goalkeeper. The sweeper keeper on the defend duty. Simple, tackle harder, shorter passing, and take fewer risks. On the right back, we're going to have a wing back on the support duty. Balanced, tackle harder, get further forward, shorter passing, run wide with the ball, and shoot less often. Over to the left-hand side, I believe it's going to be pretty much the same. It's going to be balanced, tackle harder, get further forward, run wide with the ball, shorter passing, cross from the byline, cross more often, shoot less often, and dribble more. So this one is sort of more involved in actually getting the ball into the box, which makes a lot of sense, especially that's why I love showing you some of the goals, because you saw how influential Mendy was at getting the balls over into their danger areas. Obviously, as the right back, he's not got any of this on. He's more sort of just go up the pitch type of style. The left back is more focused on getting the ball into the danger areas, to your strikers, to your Benzema's, to your Haaland's, whoever you've got up front. The two at the back then are going to be two ball playing defenders. The left hand side is balanced and short passing. The right hand side is going to be balanced, tackle harder and short passing. The three in midfield, you're going to have a deep line playmaker. In my opinion, the best role in the midfield. It's so overpowered. Genuinely a big fan of this role. Less often, mark tighter, tackle harder, shorter passing, and dribble less. Going over to the centre mid, which is going to be on attack. It's a nice change to see. Balanced, mark tighter, tackle harder, get further forward, shorter passing, take more risks, and dribble more. And then the most attacking player we have in midfield is going to be a Metzala on the attack duty. Less often, mark tighter, tackle harder, get further forward, stay wider, shorter passing, and dribble more. Going over to the front three then, on the left-hand side, we're going to have an inside forward on the attack, and he is going to be told to be less often, mark tighter, tackle harder, get further forward, sit narrower, cut inside with the ball, and shorter passing selected. Now over on the right-hand side, we've got the same role, and he's also on attack as well. The instructions for this one is going to be mark tighter, tackle harder, get further forward, cut inside with the ball, and shorter passing. And that leaves us with the main man, the goal scorer, the advanced forward on the attack duty. Less often, mark tighter, tackle harder, take more risks, dribble more, 
and shorter passing. You can go with shoot more often as well. Again, if you really want him to try and max out the goals he can be scoring. But in my opinion, it worked really well, so I'd leave it as it is. That is going to be this tactic broken down. A fantastic release from Nap once again. If you guys have enjoyed the way that I break down this tactic, be sure to show some love on this video by leaving a like. Be sure to comment on what tactic you want to see next and do subscribe to the FM Scout YouTube channel. But that is going to be it for me today, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.